scripture. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. God clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. And the Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. And then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea to return to its normal depth. The Egyptians fled before it. The Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of the Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work from, that the Lord had did against the Egyptians so that the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Here ends our reading. May God's blessing be upon those words. So it was exciting, wasn't it? It might get more exciting when the smoke hits the smoke alarms. All right, my friends, so... As I said before the smoke came, there are good things sometimes in bad events, and there are bad things sometimes in good events. Can you think of one of those examples either way? Hi, Chris. What do you think of? Good, so Chris spent 10 months in a nursing home once. Uh-oh, I was causing trouble here, sorry about that. So Chris had trouble uh, with his body, but in turn, those 10 months were a good thing for him. David, what, what, can you come up with an example? That's right, bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people. Any other examples in your life? Rick. Oh. Oh my. Oh wow. A submarine story. Rick, I'm going to ask you to get that fan that's over here. Bring it up here and go ahead and turn it on and open up those back doors. We're going to clear us out, okay? Well, you know, it seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> so, in the story today about the Israelites and the Egyptians, again, we find a story where, of course, the story is being told by an Israelite. It wasn't being told by an Egyptian, and 
If you were to take the, adva- the vantage point of an Egyptian, we know that would, there would be trouble. It would be not such a good thing that God would, uh, would, would be the bad one, or they were just, of course, not, we, are, we, we, we see, we have established here a couple weeks ago that we think that God is God of all people, not just of one people's. And so we find ourselves uh, understanding that perhaps um, uh, that it, we have to be careful when we interpret these things, or things that happen. Uh, we could interpret uh, any of these hurricanes, right? We've heard preachers talk about hurricanes hitting certain places, and they are because a certain number, of, they don't like a certain number of people in the world, or that there's some sort of a special sin that they're assigning to this event, that this is why God is, is carrying it out. You see, so we have to be very careful about this. So, so tell me then, um, uh, in your life, um, I know that you have had uh, good times and you have had bad times. Tell me, or just by a raise of the hand, has there ever been a time when you thought that just things were never going to get better? There's a hand going up there. There's another hand there, and there, and there. Yes. Back there. Right. Yeah, well, you know, that's how it feels sometimes. It sometimes feels. You can put it anywhere, Rick. Just blow it out the door right away, as soon as you can, right away, okay? Don't be looking for help. Let's get some wind going, move wind uh, going here. So, I know that maybe if you haven't raised your hand, I know that there is probably a, a time that you forgot, that it just didn't feel right, that it was very, un- very uncomfortable, and you just thought it never was going to end. Um, and then you come out at the other end, and what happens? You find that all is better, maybe, that life maybe is just different and new, you realize that life has changed somehow and that just because something happened that was really at one time just awful, that all is well and things have become better yet again. Oh, there we go. Well, I didn't even know. You see, now I got a fan going here. I got smoke and got wind, right? No fire. Not yet. Not yet. That's in a couple of weeks. All right. All right. That's right. So we know that things in many ways have turned out in the end. Or perhaps the desperate pain that we once felt uh, has been minimized. It may not have gone away, but it has been minimized. You know, this is perhaps, you know, uh, for those of us who believe firmly in God, this is God's help, you know. Uh, for other of us, uh, those of us who are less inclined in God, because there are some of us in that way, it's a matter of, of time, heals all wounds. Uh, whatever it is, we, we find as humans, we need to find a way to work through the things that uh, will plague us all and the things that seem to help us all. Have you ever been in a time that was like, oh my gosh, things couldn't get better and they're going to... They just kept on going well, right? I don't know. Is any gamblers in here? No? You know, gamblers have that problem all the time. They think it's going to, the, the, the good times are going to happen all the way. And they, they figure they're going get, to get lucky sooner or later and they keep playing, right? Well, like, again, you know, there's this, this sort of, um, there's, we have a, a hope, uh, an indomitable spirit that moves us forward. Now, if you're in a place where it just doesn't seem to be getting better, I offer you at least, instead of waiting for things to lessen in pain, I offer to you that prayer may be a place where all of a sudden you're able to find something new, find a new perspective, or at least receive a kind of, of re- uh, a reception of, of hope and um, Renew, renewal that prayer can give you. 
Um, if you haven't tried it, um, don't necessarily pray exactly for some, everything to change or the thing, one thing to change that you want to change. But maybe we need to pray that we be receptive to what is going to come before us. The next thing that comes before us is good, might be that lifeline that we're looking for. It might be some sort of a, 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 a life preserver. Whatever's coming next. And, and then with that hopefulness, perhaps we don't have to turn to stories where we believe that God is doing something negative to someone else so that we can be in the positive. I think that's an important thing for us as Christians to do. I think there was an interesting story uh, that was, I don't even know if this has great relevance, but I gotta talk about it, I gotta talk about it. It came out in the news that um, a, um, an Air Force chaplain in Ohio at Wright Pat Air Force Base came out talking that uh, anybody who, that, this, that any Christian soldier or Christian airman who was, um, who believed that uh, any other religion was worthy of uh, believing is basically wor working for Satan. Okay? In the end, that's what he said. Now, why did he say that? Uh, he basically said that they were believing in the Constitution before God or Christianity. And it was a very twisted way of, of you know, it's very interesting. I'm sure he's not going to have his commission very much longer because he basically was declaring the Constitution null and void and he's a, a military chaplain. But you see, it can drive us to believe that our God is a God that is once and for all, above and all other people and all other, um, uh, other understandings of who God is. And we have to be very careful about that. Again, if um, you were an Egyptian, you would have found this story to be a very troubling story. And we need to keep that in mind every time we read our stories. How can we put ourselves into the story? How can we do that? And one of the ways that um, we remember that Jesus was coming to remind us of that was the simple thing, because I got to do it one more time. God put Jesus into our world to live as we do. And Jesus had to understand that he was uh, uh, prone to mistakes. He was prone to uh, uh, anything that might turn him from God's will. And so with the very first thing that Jesus did, we find in uh, most of the Gospels, as far as, as, a, as, a, as an adult, was that he went and he got baptized. He went down to the river and this water, remember the water, it can be good, it can be bad. And he found in the, the uh, water this idea of being drowned, of dying to the old and rising up out of the water and reliving again. So we find that that is a seminal part of our Christian experience. If we are to believe in our baptism, we know that we can change from understanding that God is just for us and instead realizing that God is for all. So, to close it up, baptism. May you all understand I missed. I work on it, Toby. <laughs> so I didn't get you in the back over here. Okay, there's the camera over there. And Susan, okay. This is the baptism that God has for us all. The baptism of love and rec rec uh, oh, redemption for each and every one of us. So take this baptism, this water, that was once considered awful for the Egyptians and take it in instead and realize that baptism 
removes us from old ways and brings us up into new life. My friends, this is the word of God. This is the hope of God. This is the hope of our teacher in Jesus. Are you able to stand? If you are, would you stand for our next hymn, which is number 320?